uh, based on fossil fuels, maybe hydro, nuclear, well, well, mostly here it would be fossil fuels. Then it will go through the transmission network and then through the distribution lines to the consumers. As you can see, it's quite simple, right? The thing is that uh, this is not much environmentally friendly. That's uh, something that I can point out. And also, it's not as efficient, let's say, because, for example, uh, you are not using some resources that you already have, as for example, the solar potential, and instead you are used on, depending on fossil fuels, resources that we may or not have, and they are expensive as it is, and not as efficient. Also, another thing that I want to point out is that, for example, I wanted to show, you see this curve, the one that I'm showing with the laser pointer, uh, the consumption from, let's say, everyone in, the, everyone in Cyprus or in another country uh, varies along the time. So the thing is that, for example, during early in the morning, it's not going to be the same as, for example, at 8 p.m. or at 11 p.m., let's say. So we may use some resources like, for example, solar around here during the midday, and it's okay. But um, we still, at least for the big part, like, for example, you see the top part over here. Let me put, instead of this, a pen. For example, here we have our solar energy. Our solar part. But here, this part on top, this is like the peak generation, and it is more complicated to sort it out because you need to have both the consumption and generation at the same time. So, what we do is we use some generators that can go up and down uh, with the, the generation and that are more flexible, let's say, than the photovoltaics. And that's why we're using some systems that are not efficient. So even though we have PV here, we still depend on fossil fuels. So that's the thing. Uh, we need to use something more efficient. Um, for this, there has been many measures that are being taken into account right now. And for now, there's something new that has been talked about that is this, the new energy infrastructure where you can see that we don't only have uh, the conventional generation from here, but we also have storage systems like batteries. We have intelligent households, for example, home automation and data, appliances, smart appliances. We have even electric vehicles. We have PV in our houses. It's changing a lot, right? So we have a new system, and instead of just bringing this over here, now the consumer can become an active player and also like use the resources that they have, like this, for example, or this, and even for own consumption as this one, to help have a new energy infrastructure, to have a more sustainable energy infrastructure. So that's the topic over here that we're going to focus mostly on this section on demand response of how we're going to use our own consumption to help for a more sustainable grid. So, for example, here, the definition of demand response is to change our own patterns of consumption. Let's say the way we use the air conditioning, the way we use our washing machines and using it in a way that helps um, uh, the electrical network, the grid in general, and it can also help us economically. Maybe it can give us some economical benefits, let's say. So that's the main topic over here on demand response. So maybe, for example, we could have a washing machine over here, and instead of using it at 5 p.m., maybe it's better to use it at 6 p.m. So maybe we can just change the schedule and it gets better. That's a way of changing stuff. But for example, the air conditioning, instead of having it on 20 degrees, when we have a really hot weather, we can have instead of 25 degrees, that is still a bit cold, and let's say for only half an hour, and it still helps a lot too. So these changes um, are not done so we're like, okay, oh, oh no, we have to put the air conditioning or not use the air conditioning. No, it's not the idea. The idea is to have it as efficient as it is, 
without uh, feeling uncomfortable, let's say. So we're going to have these changes, but we're not going to even feel it at all, practically. We're going to even notice it. So that's the idea of demand response, to use it efficiently, but also without annoying, let's say. So that's why we use the smart devices that can like regulate themselves easier. And we also can use either, let's say, some forms of remuneration that sometimes the smart devices that I was saying could go with a signal from someone outside. Or maybe it's because there's different time frames. For example, uh, there are many different expenses. Uh, the electricity could be cheaper on this time. Here it's cheap, here not so cheap, and then here it's more expensive. So maybe we're going to use electricity where it's cheaper. So that's another way of using demand response. So as for markets, we usually have this retail market. That is just, we pay electricity and that's it. We are not focusing mostly on how we can help the network in general. We can check other forms of remuneration. Some people, like when they have a lot of, for example, uh, houses with a lot of uh, solar panels, for example, and a lot of batteries and stuff, they make it together and they make a local flexibility market, let's say, that whereas a community, they try to help each other, but it's local, let's say. What we want to do is both working with this and also with this. But the thing is, for the wholesale market, that is like the market for let's say the big people, the industry, the market for the big generators, you need to have a lot of capacity. But we're just using houses, let's say, or some buildings or small commercial or let's say in the university in general. So what we're doing is that we're going to go, I'm going to go past this a bit because we uh, were working with less time than it is supposed to. So um, uh, what we're thinking on is how to participate in this type of markets, the big ones, the wholesale market, and the balancing market that I'm going to go later if I have more time. So um, we're thinking on this, the aggregator. That is to get many clients together. So for example, we have one and one and one and one, and we have tens of these. And then instead of only one kilowatt of peak consumption, we may have four of these, or maybe 10, or maybe 100, let's say. And the aggregator is going to work with the big one, with the 10. Sorry for all the doodles, let's say. So that's the idea, to put many clients together and make them participate in the big market. And why do we do that? It's because uh, there is more cheaper, let's say, and it's also easier to handle as well. So that's the main idea, the aggregator of clustering together all of the clients so we can participate in another market, save more money, and also to make it more efficient. So that's the main goal, at least, of the aggregator, of having an extra incentive from something that usually people wouldn't even pay attention at. And so the main benefits then from demand response is uh, having a new tool for ensuring bit stability, helping with introducing renewable energy sources as solar panels and stuff, allowing for a more sustainable energy electrical power system to not depend so much on fossil fuels, and the generators that are not that efficient, as I was saying before, making a new business opportunities for the demand response aggregators, these guys that are going to cluster us together, many different households, many different buildings, they put them together so we can participate in another market and make more money, uh, reducing the necessity on investing on network expansion. It is to avoid having extra, you know, a bigger electrical network and less efficient electrical network, let's say. Reducing the reliance on fossil fuels. And for us, the more important thing, at least for the user, is we're going to have less tariff costs, at least less, cons less cost on electricity. We're going to have more efficient consumption. And we're going to have also a say, we can say, be more active in the electricity sector. That is something that people wouldn't even 
think about it some eight years ago. But now we can become actors too. And that's the important thing of the man response. So thanks for your attention. And that was the presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Jorge. Uh, do we have any questions? If not, we may now proceed to the Delta presentation, which will be performed by Alexis. Hello, everybody. Let me share my screen. Can you verify that you can see my screen, please? I yes. guess you can see my screen. So, first of all, good morning. For those that uh, do not know me, my name is Alex Frangulidis, and I'm a special scientist at FOSS Research Center for Sustainable Energy with expertise at smart grids, electric energy systems, renewable energies, and more. Starting with the Delta presentation, firstly, I want to show you the outline of the presentation, where it is which is consisted with a small introduction about the current energy market status and what are the major challenges for the transition towards a, a more efficient energy network. General information about the Delta project, its vision and its concept, the use case deployment plans for user, UCI campus, UCY selected pilot areas, and UCY and Delta implementation of DR events. Today's energy landscape is on the verge of a radical transformation. In order to reduce carbon emissions, introduce cutting edge smart grid technologies to the power systems, along with novel demand oriented electricity market design approaches. The increasing deployment of decentralized renewable resources is very challenging in order to maintain the balance of supply and demand as the capacity is mostly intermittent and not controllable. And also there are a lot of spikes in load that cannot be tackled effectively and quickly. The solution lies in changing the way generation meets demand. From classical dispatchable generation, to meet an elastic demand approach. From tapping demand flexibility through demand response services, which are the implicit and explicit demand response. As you can see in the two pictures, simply describes that the implicit, DR, implicit demand response is, pay, is based on time of use tariffs, de depending on the electricity demand, and the end users can reduce their electricity bills by using their prices, as Jorge mentioned earlier. And for the explicit DR is when the end users have smart contracts with an aggregator and BRP uh, or another uh, another uh, participate in another market. And uh, when the aggregator or the BRP send and demand response request for a certain time, the end user needs to deliver. Today, Demand aggregators have uh, DR contracts with large customers, businesses, and other flexibility through inconvenient semi-automated explicit DR and reliable implicit DR by exploiting single point centralized management of assets and by using fragmented standards and protocols. In order to move to a more efficient network, uh, we need to exploit the untapped flexibility of small and medium consumers through a novel and secure demand response management platform to generate and distribute intelligent architecture that is going to reduce uh, aggregators' uh, computational effort and to engage prosumers and end users in both explicit and implicit DR through a social collaboration platform that is required. Also, new business models, policies, and strategies, which are going to be based on open source protocols such as uh, OpenADR, 
that is a standardized end-to-end -end inter interoperability protocol. All the aforementioned requirements are included in Delta project. Delta is one of the Horizon 2020 core projects funded by Research and Innovation Action. The duration was 36 months, but we got an extension for six months. And then and the cost appro approximately 4 million euros. Delta project has 10 partners from eight European countries. The Delta objectives are to relieve aggregators from resource intensive tasks by creating the Delta virtual node, to establish an automated efficient DR management structure with a Delta fork enabled device, to simplify and fortify complex energy contractual agreements which is with the Delta blockchain methods and algorithms, and to enrich aggregators portfolio with small and medium prosumers where Delta collaboration platform and the labor services will award the end users. All of that will be tested in three pilot sites in Greece at Set Smart House, in Cyprus at UCY, and in UK at Kiwi customers. Regarding the UCY pilot site in Cyprus, Nicosia, the campus compromises 17 tertiary buildings, has a district heating grid to serve the buildings for heating and cooling needs, and uh, all the buildings are equipped with building management systems from various vendors, such as Honeywell, Siemens, and Johnson & Controls. General approval from the technical services was obtained for the whole dwelling buildings. The Faculty of Business FEP, Library, the Administration, the Residential Blocks, and the Force PV Labs. Here you can see some of the Delta's project functions. Firstly, the real-time consumption and production data are collected and passed to the known flexibility data monitoring and profiling component in order to create profiles for each customer. Then, based on the numerical and weather predictions, the forecasting tools send the data ahead load profiles to grid stability simulation engine and set portfolio energy balancing in order to run power flow analysis, investigate the art techniques, ensure that no grid violations are going to be generated, and find the most profitable, reliable, and fair customer to participate in the NDR event. Finally, those details are passed to the decision support system and send the signals to the end users in order to participate and activate in the NDR event. For sure, Delta Project offers valuable solutions for the radical transformation of the power system. That's all from me. If you have any question, do not hesitate to ask or contact me. Uh, here are my email and uh, thanks for your attention. Any questions? Okay, so I will stop sharing my screen and continue with the rest of the presentation. Hello again, everyone. Uh, we may now proceed to the presentation for uh, DreamPack. Let me start by sharing my screen. I'm guessing that you can now see my screen. Uh, and it's now on presentation mode. Uh, can someone confirm? You cannot see the presentation. Okay, let me try again.
Uh, I have now shared the complete screen. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Yes. OK, perfect. OK, so as I said, this presentation is about the DreamPack project. And as already introduced by uh, Jorge, uh, there is a major transition in Europe, in European uh, energy system. And specifically, there is a need for flexibility and in particular local flexibility. And the main benefits uh, that can be derived from consumer empowerment involve improving services for consumers, integrating more renewable energy sources, and relieving pressure on energy networks. In order to achieve these benefits and for all energy stakeholders uh, to be able to reap benefits, um, the majority of energy consumers uh, should voluntarily subscribe to demand response programs. Um, DreamPack is one of the projects that aims to um, achieve these benefits and it is funded by the European Commission under Horizon 2020. Specifically, it's funded by the European Union's uh, Framework Programme for Research and Innovation under Energy Efficiency Innovation Action. Uh, the duration of the project is uh, 48 months and it has started in, uh, on the 1st of this September in 2018 and the total contributions are uh, approximately 4 million euros. Um, the project consortium consists of 11 partners from eight European countries and four of these countries are pilot countries, uh, namely Cyprus, Spain, Germany and France. Uh, Spain offers two tertiary buildings, 55 residential apartments, where France offers an office building uh, with photovoltaics and battery storage. Germany offers 24 residential buildings, two tertiary buildings. And in our case, Cyprus, we have 17 tertiary buildings at the UCY campus, along with the residential apartments, photovoltaics and battery storage. Uh, more specifically, when it comes to the UCY pilot, uh, we have five participating buildings. Uh, the first one is the Finance, Economics and Business building. Uh, we then have the Library building, the Administration building, Student Accommodation buildings and the PV Technology Lab. Uh, all of these sites are equipped with a type of building energy management system and some of them have photovoltaics and er energy storage. Now, some of the challenges that DreamPack um, aims to overcome is uh, smart energy metering due to the slow rollout that is currently happening in uh, European member states. Uh, another challenge is the automated communication between energy market actors and buildings due to the extreme fragmentation of communication protocols. Also, currently, uh, only static time of use uh, tariffs uh, exist, and we are hoping for dynamic. And finally, NDR programs can be intrusive for consumers and carry the risk of increased bills or inconvenience because uh, potential benefits are not well known. Um, so these challenges can be overcome by some of the DreamPack objectives. The most important objective that DreamPack has is to offer an innovative, human-centric energy intelligent management solution, uh, which can support interoperable communication between grid market buildings and users, uh, which will increase the overall energy demand flexibility of buildings. Additionally, we aim to empower and actively involve uh, all energy consumers um, in order to increase uh, the building demand flexibility through both uh, implicit and explicit de demand response schemes. Um, also, consumers will be able to track and monitor their energy consumption uh, based on the DreamPack uh, application. And finally, the DreamPack solution will be demonstrated and validated uh, via piloting and market testing on the buildings that I have mentioned previously. Now, when it comes to the actual solution, we have two layers. Uh, the first layer consists of renewable energy sources, along with energy storage, and also, uh, most importantly, the industrial, commercial, domestic 
consumers and prosumers. The second layer is the aggregator layer, uh, which um, collects all the energy consumption data from the uh, consumers and prosumers, um, which are being used um, for energy consumption monitoring and are actually being fed to the optimization engine, uh, which along with the forecasted data and the energy market data, um, operates a power flow analysis in order to generate their requests and price signals, which are then sent uh, back to the consumers and prosumers. And this is actually the main idea behind um, the DreamPack solution. And uh, this concludes the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Okay, if we don't have any questions, um, uh, I will stop sharing my screen and uh, we should now have a 10 minute break since we are, uh, we have a lot of time and uh, we will come back in 10 minutes uh, for the demonstration of the Delta and DreamPack uh, platforms.
Hello again, everyone. Now the break is over. Uh, we may continue with the uh, user engagement uh, session. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen again. Um, you should now be able to see my presentation on user engagement. Uh, can someone confirm? Yes, we can see it. OK, thank you. Um, OK, so this session is about user engagement. I will explain what are the specific role and responsibilities of the pilot participants. Uh, starting with uh, some background knowledge of what we have done so far. Um, we had an initial online form that was developed and circulated between the facility managers and building representatives. We have also contacted some focus groups uh, with the aim to elicit end users in participating, as well as to provide their feedback. Additionally, we have participated in uh, several dissemination activities, such as researchers night in 2019, uh, some social media activities, and also some press releases of the University of Cyprus. Now, uh, for the upcoming dissemination activities, what we expect uh, from the pilot participants is to uh, participate in workshops like the one we have today, uh, in focus groups, competitions, uh, social media involvement, and in general, all the project activities uh, that uh, require their participation. Um, additionally, by the end of each project, we will conduct a survey in order to uh, obtain the insights uh, into user experience and possibly we will also conduct interviews um, with the participants for the qualitative analysis of the survey um, that will be conducted. Um, now what it uh, means to be a building representative is that each uh, person uh, will be responsible for one building um, all building representatives will have to register through the platform and they will receive a 30 euro voucher uh, for their participation, which can be redeemed at the UCY facilities. And the main activity that they have to perform is to respond to price signals by accepting requests and controlling the rest of the residences according to the signal. So what does that mean in uh, most specific uh, ter terms is that when an incoming signal uh, indicates that the prices are high, it means that the building uh, representative should communicate with the rest of the people in the building and to in order to reduce their consumption. However, when the prices are low, uh, then the consumption uh, should be increased. Um, by the end of every month, the residences of the building with the best response uh, will receive a five euro voucher, which again can be redeemed at the UCY facilities. And now, uh, in order to demonstrate the Delta platform, we have invited one of our colleagues from CERT um, because they are responsible for the technical part of the platform. Um, so I will stop uh, sharing my screen now so that Lambros can uh, demonstrate the platform. Uh, Lambro, you now have the floor. Hello from my side too. Good morning to everyone. Uh, just let me share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Perfect. Uh, this is uh, the login page uh, of uh, the Delta user interface uh, and uh, by typing the credential of uh, a user, then uh, we can uh, log in and you can see the main uh, dashboard uh, of your 
Fog Enable Intelligent uh, Device, which is uh, installed uh, in uh, specific uh, buildings, uh, student residential buildings. Um, in the upper layer, you can see um, real-time information uh, about uh, the consumption and regeneration of the building and some uh, performance uh, indicators about uh, the device. And um, the most important is uh, the load consumption, which is the one that, that uh, uh, the, stud uh, the students can uh, reduce or uh, increase. Uh, the generation cannot be um, changed. Um, as uh, the photovoltaics are uncontrollable. Um, you can check uh, whether the fade is online or off on, or offline. Um, you can choose uh, the DR availability if uh, you are available for DR. In case that uh, you switch uh, this button off, this means that uh, if a DR demand response request comes to this fade, it will be rejected automatically. Um, the next button is uh, the DR auto response. Um, with this button, you give um, the availability, uh, the ability to fade to select uh, whether you will uh, accept or reject a, a demand response request. Otherwise, um, it is upon your choice uh, to choose uh, to accept or to reject uh, the incoming uh, request. Um, in this tab, you can see uh, uh, the points that you are earning from uh, um, the, the game that you are participating. Um, in this table, you have uh, the the demand response events that uh, has come um, ha has came uh, this day, and uh, the next graphs are uh, the historical graphs uh, from uh, this day and uh, the forecast uh, for this day. Uh, you can see the the real time power uh, of the PV uh, of the power consumption uh, of the loads and the forecasts. Uh, for for the load and uh, for the photovoltaic. In the dashboard historical, you can check uh, uh, historical measurements from uh, consumption and generation by selecting a different uh, date uh, on uh, on this calendar. In the tab events, you can see all the events uh, that uh, you have uh, received um, based uh, again on uh, the period that uh, you have uh, choose. A colleague of mine, uh, maybe he test his <laughs> demand response uh, request. So we received uh, uh, a request. Uh, you have pop-up uh, message and um, pop-up notifications for any incoming uh, request um, in order uh, to inform you uh, that you received a new uh, demand response request and you have to um, choose whether you are going to accept or reject it. And uh, you will inform also um, for any time uh, that uh, a demand response request has started and um, in case that uh, a DR has uh, completed or has been uh, failed, you will be uh, informed uh, too. Uh, you have also um, available uh, forums where you can uh, uh, post uh, some uh, questions um to to other customers um that uh, you are in the same uh, uh, game and to the same pilot um, and uh, you can get uh, answers to your questions uh, for any post uh, that you do uh, in this uh, uh, 
uh, forum, you gain also some uh, uh, very small, uh, very low points. Uh, it's very easy. You choose um, the subject where you want uh, to put uh, another um, uh, question and you press the button for posting a new topic. You write the title and uh, your question and you uh, you press submit. And then, for example, And then every other can uh, press on, the, on your request and uh, give uh, his uh, answers. Um, another ability uh, that you have is to have chat with uh, other customers. You can choose any of these customers uh, and um, type a direct uh, message. The last one is that you will be notified for any vouchers that uh, uh, the aggregator um, has um, created. Uh, this means that uh, the aggregator uh, creates um, vouchers um, which uh, can be um, mm, can be used in order to get some uh, money. Um, and uh, the voucher depends on the points that you have earned from uh, the games. Uh, let's have also an example with uh, the voucher. Uh, so uh, the the aggregator creates a voucher and also he selects uh, the period that uh, this voucher will be active. And then every customer can see the voucher uh, in his uh, dashboard. Um, as you can see, uh, you can uh, select uh, to uh, exchange uh, the voucher with uh, your points. Uh, if you reach uh, the 100 points that uh, the aggregator has set uh, as uh, value, um, you can exchange uh, the voucher or you can uh, send uh, the voucher as a gift to a friend uh, of you uh, by uh, losing also the same amount uh, of points. We can see that you have earned uh, 20 points this is uh, why, uh, because uh, uh, we posted a, a question to the forum, so the remaining points uh, for the voucher are 80. And uh, the last thing is uh, we can see a DR event. So a DR event is uh, just like this. Uh, we have the start time and the duration of it. Um, and of course, the the value that uh, you have to to reach uh, with um, within uh, its uh, time slot. So you can do specific uh, actions. You have to lower or increase um, the loads the load consumption on your buildings in order uh, to increase or uh, um, decrease uh, the power consumption. 
uh, it's worth to note that uh, uh, the time interval of the measurements uh, in the pilot of uh, the uh, University of Cyprus is uh, 15 uh, minutes. So you can see an update on these uh, values every 15 minutes. Um, the actual set point of uh, the DR is um, the addition of the load and the generation because um, the, um, the building uh, has as an output uh, to the distribution grid, let's say, um, of uh, the addition between the load and uh, the generation. So if, uh, for example, uh, right now you can see that uh, this building uh, consumes about uh, um, 11 uh, kilowatts and produces uh, about 11 kilowatts. So we are about uh, 600 um, watts uh, that uh, are producing from this building. Um, if the set point is, uh, uh, if the set, the set point is to 100 uh, to 800 uh, watts and uh, this means uh, more consumption so you have to turn off uh, some uh, loads in your building otherwise you have to turn off uh, some loads in order to to lower the consumption uh, of your building um i think uh, that's all from my side. Thank you very uh, much, Lambro. Kyriaki, do you mean, uh, do you think that uh, we have to say more on a specific uh, section of the dashboard? Uh, no, I think it's fine for now. But okay. if anyone has any questions, uh, please ask. Of course, when the time comes and the students will download the app, uh, we will go through it together. And if you have any specific questions at that time, of course, Lambros will be here to help. Yes, uh, of course. So and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Lambros. Uh, so let's go back to the presentation to demonstrate the DreamPack platform. Um, let me share my screen again. Uh, I'm guessing that it's visible. Uh, sorry. Okay, so for the DreamPack project, uh, because it's uh, at an earlier stage compared to Delta, uh, we will show you the user interfaces first of what we have so far. And then we will show you um, a small demo of uh, the applications that we currently have. Um, now regarding the user interfaces, we have the visual analytics for residential end users. Um, this interface consists of a main dashboard with information about buildings actual performance, um, meaning the consumption and the generation if uh, available. And it also includes the building's historical analysis. Uh, in terms of dynamic tariffs, that means that um, when uh, um, uh, the visual analytics uh, show red, it indicates that uh, the prices are high. Um, when uh, it is green, it means that the prices are low. And there is also a rotating cursor that indicates um, real time. Uh, again, on the visual analytics, you can also observe the dry, uh, diagrams uh, with daily information about power consumption of the buildings, about indoor ambient conditions, and also additional information when hovering over the diagrams. So uh, for the DreamPack project, we will also install some smart boxes and multi-sensors at the uh, student residences. So each building representative will be responsible for this equipment. 
And for this reason, we want the participants to sign a GDPR form and also a damage consent form. And uh, with that uh, smart box, we will also have the associated application, um, which um, allows the end users to access uh, the app through a smartphone or a tablet. And they can use the app to navigate to DreamPack intervention rooms. So in our case, each student will have um, its own intervention room um, where they can access uh, the actual monitoring data for DreamPack. And in some cases, they can also perform real time control actions. So um, uh, the app consists of a main dashboard. Uh, where the end users can access every device controlled by DreamPact. Uh, for the peer up that will be um, HVAC systems, which are controlled through the intensity boxes, and the um, lights, which are controlled by the FIBAR gateways. Um, they can also perform control based on the dynamic tariffs. Um, we can also monitor changes in the indoor environment, and finally, we can utilize uh, the virtual analytics um, tool uh, that can uh, keep um, all the participants engaged with the project. Um, more specifically, we have an HVAC um, dashboard uh, where um, the participants can access uh, the HVAC system and they can perform uh, all available control actions such as switch on, switch off, a uh, change of temperature, a uh, change of operational mode and also a change uh, of uh, fan speed. Now for the expected impact, uh, we expect for both projects to increase the economic benefits of all active participants, uh, to unlock the flexibility potential uh, of all pilot sites, and also to increase the implementation of renewable energy sources. Uh, so now we may proceed with the demo for the DreamPact uh, Smartbox app. Uh, Alexis will do uh, the demo. So let me stop sharing my screen. Hello again. So just uh, what Kiriaki presented, this is the app that the end user will download on their phone. Um, now I'm going to show you uh, the control and monitoring platform uh, that uh, the project manager can can control everything actually in a pilot site. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. So here, as you can see, is the open hub and the, where is the control room. Here we have all the devices connected uh, through uh, the internet the network and we have access to them. As Kiriagi mentioned that we have some multi-sensors, here they are. We have the tenses that control the air conditions and also the FIPARO switches are control the lights. In order to do some example and see the changes, um, because it's too hot, I will not change the Air condition, but let's change the lights. For example, here we have a, a single light, a single LED panel. We can simply turn it off and we'll see that the consumption is changing. This one will become zero. Yeah. We can turn it on. And also we can use the dimming and dimmer to turn it down slowly or just leave it at 46% in order to save some energy. Before it was 50 watts, now it's 13.9. We can make it 67. But of course, we have to know that um, this can affect the performance of the workers. So we, we allow to the end user to change it back uh, through the, uh, his, his hair switch. Or the same with the air condition. 
Now the air conditioner 25. You can click here and change the temperature to 23, to 22, to 21, whatever we want. I will keep it to 25. Also, you can change the fan speed. Now it's in auto mode. You can put high mode or at one. You can change the swing up and down, um, swing left or right, and everything. And the multi sensor here. I confirm that um, what is the temperature of each room. Um, here is 26.4 Celsius, 29, the luminance, and and uh, also motion for occupancy. But for this purpose, for the purpose of the monitoring the PV labs, we don't use motion alarm. Thanks again. Let me stop sharing. Do you have any questions regarding the monitoring tool? I'll stop sharing my screen. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Alexi. Uh, so this concludes the workshop. Um, right now in the agenda, we have a scheduled session for open discussion. And so if you have any questions in general or feedback that you can give for the interfaces, please uh, say something. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, so when do we start with the project? When do we start with uh, monitoring and everything else? Uh, so for the Delta project, we are um, almost ready. So hopefully in the next few days, we will start uh, uh, some activities. And um, as soon as we have everything ready, we will contact you again and uh, share the platform and every, everything that is needed uh, for you in order to register and start um, um executing some dr signals okay perfect thank you uh, do we have any more questions if not i think that concludes the workshop um we'll uh, share with you the recording if uh, if you want to, uh, please send me an email and ask about it. We have also taken some uh, screenshots for dissemination purposes. Again, if someone has an issue with that, please send me an email. Uh, other than that, I would like to thank you for joining today and thank you for being here. Of course, uh, you can contact either me, Alexis or Jorge for specific questions. And that is all for today. Thank you again for being here.